Hello everybody, Wald here, and in this episode, we will be going over two types of ways that will allow us to render text onto the screen. Phaser currently supports two ways of rendering text. The first one is the text object, which uses web fonts. This type of text uses a local hidden canvas object and renders the text on it. Then it makes a texture from this and renders it into the view. The downside to this is that it is very slow and you can only display fonts that are currently loaded and available to the browser. The upside is that it's very easy to set shadows, fills and other effects to your text object. The other way is a very fancy and efficient way, but it can be more difficult to set up. This type of way is called bitmap text which works by taking a texture file and an XML or JSON file that describes the font structure. It creates a new sprite object for each letter of the text given to render. The downside of this is that they are less flexible than the other way. You can't set shadows, fills and you can't use web fonts either. However, one huge advantage to doing this type of rendering is that it's a lot faster to render. Plus, you can even create your own fonts as well. There are plenty of tools on the internet to create bitmap text data. I personally recommend Littera. It's a web-based, free bitmap text editor that is very flexible. I will show you both ways of doing this. First, I will show you the text object way, and then I will show you the bitmap text way. So the first way is the text object way. This is actually very simple to set up, so let's go ahead and do it. So first of all, we need two variables which will actually hold our text object. So let's go ahead and create those variables. We're going to call them uh, var score one text. And let's go ahead and create another one for the second player. And let's go ahead and actually um, set up these uh, variables in our create function. So we can go ahead and say uh, score uh, one text equals game dot add dot text. And then we need to pass in the position. So we need uh, on the x axis, we'll set it 228, and on the y, we'll set it 228. Then uh, we need to pass in a string which will tell it what to render. So we're just gonna put in zero for now, uh, we'll change it later. And now, because text objects need um, a web font, it needs a web font for it to display anything. So let's go ahead and open up uh, brackets in here and say font. Um, 64 pixels, um, you can set any Google font or any web font that's loaded in the browser. I'm just going to use uh, Gabriella because it just looks nice. And then here you can also set any properties that you want, uh, such as fill alignments. Uh, let's go ahead and set the fill to a white. And we'll do uh, that and six Fs, one, two, three, four, five, six. And let's set the alignment uh, to be uh, center. And let's actually do that for the second score object, um, second score text object, sorry. And we'll just change that to uh, score two text. And we need to change the position to game.world.width minus 128. And on the Y, we'll set it to 128. If we actually jump into the game right now, you can see that there are two text objects on both sides of the screen. Uh, they don't actually do anything right now because we haven't told them to do anything, but uh, we will do that right ahead. But first of all, I want to show you how to do the bitmap text way. The bitmap text way actually requires two files to load, so that's why I've left a link in the description to where you can download these uh, files. So let me go ahead and open my assets folder. And in here I have two files. I have the font.png and a font.xml file. Uh, the font.png is just a sprite sheet which holds uh, all of the characters. Um, and then the font.xml is just a file which specifies the structure. So let me go ahead and change the layout real quick and go back to our index. And in here we need to actually load that file. So while loading bitmap fonts, uh, you need to actually uh, specify both uh, paths to both the spreadsheet and the uh, XML file. So let's go ahead and say game.load.bitmap font. We need an ID, we'll set it to font. And then we need to specify the path to the spreadsheet. We'll just say assets uh, font.png. 
and then we need a path to our to our XML file. Let's go ahead and say assets uh, slash font.xml. So that's our bitmap font lo uh, loaded, and now we need to actually um, uh, display it. So let's go ahead and just comment these out, and uh, we'll do a we'll do the same thing, but with, just with bitmap fonts. Say score one dot, uh, underscore text equals game dot add dot bitmap text. We specify the position again, uh, 128 by 128. And then we need to specify which font we want to use. We want to use font uh, because that's what we saved the ID as. It's the same ID as this, and we'll use this font. And then we need to specify uh, what we want it to render, or we'll just say zero again. And then we need to specify the size of which it will display this text. So we'll just say 64 by 64 pixels. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for the second score text. So if we went to the game right now, you can see that there is only one text object. And that was because I forgot to change the position of the second text. Uh, so let's go ahead and change that to uh, game.wall.width minus um, 128. So now if we went into the game, you can see that there are two text objects on both sides of the screen. And they actually don't do anything just yet. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to create another var uh, another two variables, which will actually hold the scores. So we'll say um, bar score one and bar score two. And we'll just set those to zero in the create function as score one to zero and score two uh, to zero as well. Now we can actually go ahead and set the text um, which we want to render um, in our update function, so we can go ahead and say uh, score uh, score one text dot text equals score one. And do the same thing for the second score. So all of this all this will just set the text of the score uh, of the text object or the bitmap uh, text object uh, to this, which is an integer. Now we need to actually in, uh, increment our score. Uh, so let's go ahead and say. Because right here we are checking if the uh, the ball is being blocked on the left side or the right side, then just console log something out. We actually don't want that. We want to uh, set the uh, score um, two in this case. We'll just add it by one. So this will increment uh, the score two a variable by one, meaning the second uh, player two has scored. And we need to do the same thing for the uh, first player, and we'll do just that. And that will automatically get updated uh, to this because we are doing it in the update function, and it, an update function is being um, run every frame. So if we went into the game right now, we can see that the score gets changed every time uh, that the ball hits uh, one of the walls. As you can see, the player, uh, the second player, just scored. And if I actually uh, get a score, it's actually kind of slow right now because I have everything running. Um, but yeah, if I can actually get uh, get a point, it would also show up. So that was pretty much it. Thank you for watching. And if you'd like to never miss content from my channel, I upload weekly, then please go ahead and subscribe. I would love to hear your feedback in the comments. And until next time, goodbye.